uh, we are preparing for CAT 2019. What will you do starting now? Starting say the 1st of August, what should you do? Uh, if you are starting from scratch now, uh, make sure that you are learning the fundamentals. There is still time to learn from basics. Don't bypass steps, go to the final step, start doing some fancy shortcuts. Read a lot, learn fundamentals, build speed, take mocks. This is what we would tell somebody who has 15 months for preparation and tell somebody who has only 4 months for preparation. And so the, the, the script remains the same. Learn fundamentals, practice a lot to make sure your, your automaticity goes up, your speed goes up, and then take a lot of mocks. Right? More specifically, if you're in August, what should you do differently? Right? So very often I find students asking me this wonderful question about revision. Okay? I do questions, I take cover 10, 12 topics, and then when I revise, I realize that I've forgotten what I learned in topic 1, 2, 3. This happens to everybody. This is why uh, a lot of learning happens in what is called as a spiraling method. So you need to add layer after layer to it. If you're doing topic 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, you have to do 1, 2 back again. Then add 6 and 7, revisit 3, 4. Add 8 and 9, revisit 1, 2 very quickly, then add 3, 4, 5, 6. So you have to keep revisiting. That's part of the gig. So don't ignore that. Your mind has to take time to consolidate ideas. And if that happens iteratively, acknowledge that. The second very important part of the jigsaw from now is mocks. And you need to have a very disciplined schedule for mocks. You've got to give yourself a, a, a good talking to and say, look, I'm going to hit 20 mocks or 24 mocks from now till the exam. You need to take one every 10 days, one every fortnight now, ramp it up to once a week, maybe then twice a week, perhaps even more before you go to the exam. Anytime you take a mock, you analyze the mock, see where your learning gaps are, fill them see where your speed gaps are, fill them, and then go to the next mock. Just doing mocks on autopilot is not going to take you anywhere. Make sure that once you finish the mock, you revisit theory. You might have thought you're a dying in geometry, and then you have your backside handed to you in, in a mock. You have to go and relearn your angle bisector theorem. If you don't do that, then the whole takeaway from this point mock is useless. So make sure you revisit. It is not all about speed building. It is also about reinforcing fundamentals. Don't get carried away by saying, look, I'm so close to the exam. I, I will not revisit this. I will choose to only build speed. It's not worth it. Right? Other things to keep in mind, now, from about say second half of September, you've got to take decisions on which topics you're going to dump, what style of questions are not your thing, whether you're never going to be good at para jumble. So you've got to start leaving some things and say, look, I don't care about this. I'll maximize what I've got. That kind of thought process becomes refined only if you've taken a bunch of mocks. So please focus on taking those mocks so that you can take those decisions. What topics am I good at? What am I not so good at? What am I kind of iffy in? What can I work on? What can I dump? That, that those kind of decisions need to be taken, say from second half of September onwards. Till then you can say, look, I'm gonna learn everything. But you have to take that decision at some point of time. So keep that in mind when you're when you're doing your mock cycle. Final thing, whenever you're, you're doing mocks, there are going to be days when you're dispirited. Where you, you, you take a, you get an 80th percentile in a mock, then 87, and then 92. Then you want to nail it and hit 94. And you slide all the way back to 72. This can happen. Uh, with the exam nearing, you don't have the option of going three weeks without preparation because you're in a funk. And so mock scores will be volatile. So you have to have the self-belief to say, look, I'm doing the right things. It didn't work this mock. Next time it will work. So this is as much a test of temperament as it is of intellect or aptitude or skill or whatever else you'll call it. There will be multiple points in this journey that are very dispiriting for everyone. From the guy who's going to end up with 80th percentile to the guy who's going to end up with 99.95 or 100th percentile. There'll be points of time where they feel like things are not all falling in place. It will happen. It is bound to happen. How you pick yourself up will determine how your preparation is going and not the fact that you have had a bad day or a bad week. Mock scores will be volatile. Revisit that. And so there are times during the mock where you'll take one section and you know that that is tank. You feel like this mock is gone. This is done. Why should I bother with the remaining two sections? That's when your the, the grit part of your system should say, I know my section one is tanked. I'm still going to throw a lot into sections two and three and see the best I can salvage from here. Those kind of things train your mind to be intense, to have stamina, to, to handle pressure, to not be dispirited by some one thing that goes amiss. Because this could very well happen in your exam. 
where in your DILR section you spent 16 minutes in a set you're going nowhere and you're going to dump it the question is not the, your exam is not going to be based on that 16 minutes your exam is going to get killed by the next five minutes when you're supposed to be doing the next set where 60 percent of your brain is lamenting the fact that you've wasted 16 minutes that will kill you how you recover from a setback is going to be a far bigger determiner than than trying to avoid all setbacks nobody is foolproof i've taken cat a gazillion time i walked into trap after trap after trap in the last cat i took and everything i hit all the boxes and so it can happen to anybody it frequently happens to me how you recover from it is going to be more crucial than 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 having trying to have a foolproof plan of avoiding all pitfalls and so have that grit build that grit with that grit comes self belief from from the last journey You've got to say, I have the belief, I'm going to give myself the best chance and then we'll see what happens. Right? Best wishes for CAC, this is a definitely crackable exam. Give your all in the last 100, 110 or 120 or how many ever days are there. Cheers guys.